This morning's Breakfast Bible Bites, we will begin to examine Psalm 72 with a rather lengthy introduction about God's anointed king. Psalm 72 is a prayer for the prosperity of God's anointed king. In this psalm, the psalmist prays for God's blessing on the king. Although the psalm is labeled a Solomonic psalm, like the psalms affiliated with David, while the title in some translations declared Solomon to be the author, verse 20 seems to imply that David uttered it in a prayer before he died. Perhaps Solomon caught his father's dying song and then fashioned it into a poetic verse. The words of the psalm are best understood when we read it with the supposition that it was composed by David both in view of the anticipated glories and peaceful signs and the peaceful reign of his son and successor, as well as, well as looking far into the future to the yet-to-arrive peaceful millennial reign of Jesus, who is the Messiah and the true King of glory. The psalmist also prays that God would bless the nation of Israel as a whole. He asks God to give the king uh, the virtues of justice and righteousness so that he would be able to judge the people. The psalmist the psalm's prophetic implications are apparent in the following ways. In verse 2 and 4 of this psalm, it reads, He will judge your people with righteousness and your afflicted ones with justice. In verse 4, May he vindicate the afflicted among the people, help the poor, and crush the oppressor. Now compare that to the messianic prophecies found in Isaiah 11.4. But he will judge the poor righteously and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with discipline from his mouth, and he will kill the wicked with a command from his lips. Verse 5 also validates the premise of this prophetic uh, nature. May he continue while the sun endures as long as the moon throughout all generations. Now compare it to Isaiah 9.7. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. In Psalm 72 verses 8, 11, and 17, it should be easily understood that they accurately describe the state of things under the Messiah things that cannot be literally applied to the reign of Solomon. Many writers of the Old Testament did look forward to the remarkable personage of the Messiah, the one who was to appear in their distant future. There is perhaps no part of the Old Testament where this is more manifest than in the psalm before us. It bears all of the marks of having been composed under the influence of such an idea. In the conclusion of Psalm 72, verses 15 through 17 inform us that peace and justice will continue until the final judgment and the eighth millennium begins in the new heaven and on the new earth. Genesis 22:15 through 18 reads, Then the angel of the Lord said to Abraham a second time from heaven, and he said, By myself I have sworn, this is the Lord's declaration, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your only son, I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your offspring will possess the gates of their enemies, and all the nations on earth will be blessed by your offspring, because you have obeyed my command. Those whose names remain written in the Lamb's book of life can look forward to joining with our Lord in the new heaven and on the new earth. We read in 2 Corinthians 3.11, For what was fading away was glorious. What endures will be even more glorious. 